Land, the peaceful, carefree country located on the planet Popstar. This quiet land would become the target of a darkness so evil that, if it succeeded, Popstar would become forever lost in its grasp. This assault on Dreamland was initially headed by a being only known as Dark Matter. With motives unclear, this being's only goal seems to be to conquer planets and turn them into dark worlds. Dark Matter is a dangerous parasite. It seems to know nothing but malice and destruction, set on covering everything in its black cloud. And now, it's here today to spread its darkness to the world of Super Smash Bros. Let's hope the other fighters are strong enough to push it back. So getting right into things, Dark Matter can be a below average heavyweight fighter. Common amongst Kirby characters, it have a lot of jumps, five in total to be precise, and no additional movement options. The Dark Matter entity has taken a number of different forms over the years, but the version that you'll be controlling for this moveset will be the form commonly known as Dark Matter Blade, the first shape we ever see it take in Kirby's Dream Land 2. It'll utilize many different powers, fighting in a similar way to the Dark Matter clone created by Star Dream and Kirby Planet Robobot. One can argue that the clone isn't quite accurate to the original, but for this moveset, this'll just help things remain more coherent, though I will alter a few things depending on the context. For example, it won't have the Rainbow Sword. Some speculate that the clone has this because of what the data of its memories remembers destroying it, so those got mixed into Stardream's cloning process. So it'll just have its normal sword, which even then is kinda random. Why does it even have a sword? Just to match the night attire that it took on for some reason? There's a lot of mystery behind Dark Matter, but that's not important. For now, let's just get things started with its jab. Dark Matter could use Dark Fury, a variation of the Rainbow Fury attack used by the clone. This is a two-hit semi-spammable jab, swinging its sword forward in a figure-eight motion, slightly moving forward with each swing. The dash attack could be the Dark Dive, a move seen in Dreamland 2 as well as in Robobot in the form of the Rainbow Dive. It's a thrusting sword stab attack, lunging forward out of its dash to impale anyone in its way. The side tilt can have it swing its sword vertically from high to low, a little attack that it uses in Dreamland 2 to deter players from trying to attack it from the front. As such, this is a simple little get off me move. It's quick, disjointed, and fairly reliable. The up tilt can have Dark Matter swing its sword overhead from front to back, but as it does so, small Dark Matter clouds split off from the sword and fly upward at varying angles. These clouds deal small flinching damage, counters projectiles, and dissipate after a bit, so they're mainly good at vertical spacing and pressure. The sword itself is where the real damage is, launching foes into the air. Overall, another scary, disjointed move. Now, whenever Dark Matter crouches, it's shown hiding the lower part of its body in the shadows of the ground, so that whenever it uses its down tilt, it can surprise its enemies by stabbing its sword out in front of itself to knock them away. For Dark Matter's side smash, it could use the Dark Sword Beam, a move from Dreamland 2 where it fires beams from its sword straight forward. For Smash, using this move with no charge has it fire a single beam projectile forward. If you do charge the Smash, it becomes the Rapid Sword Beam, firing a bunch of beam shots one after another. The amount fired depends on how long you charge the attack, and it's only ever the last beam fired that will actually launch opponents. All others shot prior only cause hit stun. Dark Matter's Up Smash could have it use the Dark Beam Wave, the first attack here to have Dark Matter reveal its true eye and use it to fire powerful dark shots. Also originally from Dreamland 2, this move has Dark Matter roll its eye in a full circle, firing constant shots into the directions it looks into. For the up smash, it won't roll its eye in a full circle, but instead just does the same eye rolling motion that most of you guys do whenever I share an opinion. See? You just did it now. It rolls its eye from front to back, firing projectiles from its pupil all around itself. The shots fired will launch opponents into the direction that they were flying into, and they will disappear after flying a set distance or when they make contact with something. Then for Dark Matter's down smash, it can be shown stabbing its sword into a black fog that appears under its body, and as soon as it does so, 
Two large blades shoot out from the fog on both sides of dark matter, both stabbing straight up to launch foes into the air. Foes can also get hit by the normal sword that dark matter stabs down, and if they are, they'll be shoved forward just far enough to place them directly on top of the sword that shoots up in front of dark matter. You overall never want to be right in front of dark matter. Looking directly at its eye is what puts you in the most amount of danger, and that'll become even more apparent as I get further into this hole. Moving on to the aerials, the neutral air can have dark matter use its orbitars, orange palpitations that we see sticking out of the back of its real form. The move has it spawn a bunch of orbitars that quickly orbit around its body like a wheel, then after spinning for a short bit, are all shot off at the same time in all directions. Foes hit by the orbitars as they spin are dealt multi-hitting damage, then are launched when the orbitars are launched. This can be another great spacing tool for dark matter, but the orbitars do count as projectiles once they're shot off. The forward air can have dark matter open up a large mouth with razor sharp teeth on its body and bites forward three times. The first two bites cause hits done, the third bite deals the knockback, and every chomp deals a lot of damage. This masticating aerial is a direct reference to the creepy move that we normally only see from dark matter when it's possessing King DDD, where the zigzags on his sash turn into a mouth. Gluttony before gluttony. The back air can have it fire more more orbitar projectiles from its backside, shooting off multiple at once that fly into slightly different angles. It's kinda weak comparatively to most back airs, but each orbitar deals individual damage, so the more you get hit by, the more damage you take. As such, the closer a foe is to dark matter when it uses this move, the more damage it'll deal. The up air can show dark matter doing a wide looping backflip while swinging its sword overhead from front to back. It's a little slow, but it covers a lot of area and has great disjoint. And for the down air, this can be the first, well, really the only attack that pulls from the leader of Dark Matter, Zero. Well, more precisely, Zero Two, showing Dark Matter grow a large thorn-covered branch that stabs straight down from the bottom of its body. It's another move with a lot of disjoint, and getting hit by the spikes while they grow will spike you. Dark Matter will grab opponents by emitting a dark mist from its body, trapping them within it, and it pummels by using small Dark Matters that appear from within the mist to assault their prey. The forward throw can have Dark Matter's true eye suddenly and creepily bulge out of its body to knock the foe forward. The back throw can have it pass through the opponent's body, giving them the heebie-jeebies, then slashes at their back. The up throw shows Dark Matter retreating into the shadows below, then shoots up under the foe's feet to launch them into the air, and the down throw has Dark Matter instead pull the foe into the shadows, suffocating them to rack up damage, then shoots them into the air. For Dark Matter's neutral special, it could use the Dark Orb Shot. This is a pretty simple special. It creates a dark orb at the tip of its sword, then chucks it forward. It has a small amount of startup while it creates the orb, but during said startup, you can point the control stick into any direction to have the orb be thrown into that direction, including backward, letting you turn your shot to potentially fake out opponents. The orb will disappear after flying its max distance or once it hits a player. If it hits the stage, though, it ricochets, bouncing into a new direction and extending its fly time. Getting hit by the orb deals a decent amount of damage and knockback, but if it's reflected, it splits off into three small orbs that all fly in different angles, technically increasing its spacing, but also severely weakening the move, since each small orb only deals small flinching damage. Though, since this only happens when the move is reflected, it's mainly dark matter who has to worry about it. But considering how weak the reflected orb is, not to mention its ricocheting nature in general, it could potentially be used to bait reflections. Next, for Dark Matter's side special, it could use its Dark Lightning Attack. Another fairly simple special, Dark Matter fires a lightning bolt from its eyeball. This bolt knocks opponents away on contact, it can be slightly angled up or down, and it does not count as a projectile. Major downsides are that, while the bolt itself is pretty instant, there is a bit of start lag while it charges up. It may also have some good range, but it is pretty thin, so some good accuracy is required if you want to smite your opponents effectively. Now for Dark Matter's up special, another simple one, it could use the Dark 
dash. This has it erupt the palpitations on its back, launching it into any chosen direction like a rocket. It's deceptively strong, dealing a hefty amount of damage and knockback to foes in Dark Matter's dash path, and it will go into freefall afterward. And lastly, for Dark Matter's down special, it's anything but simple. It could conjure a Dark Matter cloud. Dark Matter opens its real eye and fires forward a slow-moving Dark Matter cloud, much in the same way that we see the possessed DDD fire small black projectiles from the eye on his belly. This cloud flies forward a set distance, then dissipates if it travels for too long. If a cloud hits a player, however, they fall under Dark Matter's influence and become possessed. Possessed players receive a number of conditions. They become more aggressive, gaining a higher damage output and more launch power, but they also become confused, causing their horizontal controls to be reversed and their attack and special buttons to be switched, making fighting way more difficult if you don't pay attention to your controls. You'll know when you're possessed when you see your character's body emitting black fog. Possession will automatically wear off after a certain amount of time or once the possessed player takes a certain amount of damage, whichever happens first. It is very strong, but there is a limit. After a player shakes off possession, they gain a natural immunity to it for a little while, unable to be possessed again until that immunity wears off. So while Dark Matter can possess as many people as it wants, it can't keep doing so to the same people over and over. What can't gain immunity, though, are assist trophies. If Dark Matter possesses one of them, they fall under its control, and can only be broken free once they sustain any damage. Fitting to the nature of Dark Matter, it's a very oppressive fighter. If you let it gain control of the battlefield, it'll be incredibly hard to escape its darkness. Do whatever you can to stay out of its sight, because if you're face to face with that eyeball, it's already too late. For Dark Matter's final smash, it could have a cinematic final smash where Dark Matter takes on its real form and releases a burst of dark fog all around itself, and all players caught in the fog will get pulled in. Players are then sent to the Hyper Zone, where they're confronted by the source of Dark Matter, Zero, who spawns countless numbers of Dark Matter that all rush at the opponents, racking up tons of damage. The final smash ends with Zero shooting a small speck of light from its eye that sneaks its way into the Dark Matter cluster and exploding soon after, ending the cinematic and launching away all caught foes afterward, with the main Dark Matter reappearing from the fog in the spot where it initiated the cinematic. Quick side note, the exploding light bit came from Zero 2, not Zero, and while I am aware of the possibility that they are two separate beings, I am mixing up their powers a bit for the sake of the moveset. For Dark Matter's colors, the default shows it with its blue armor and gray cape. The Orbitars are orange, and will change color between the alts. The first alt can reference the original art of Dark Matter that gave it purple Orbitars. The next few are original colors, starting with a green-themed color, then a dark navy one, then maroon, then dark yellow, Then here's a monochrome color, a callback to the original Game Boy colors. And lastly, here's an alt with red armor and a dull red cape, its body becomes white, and its eye is also red, a direct reference to Zero itself. For the stage intro, you see a black mass appear from all directions and form together to create Dark Matter. This references when the real Dark Matter appears during the Dreamland 2 boss fight, as well as when it emerges from King Dedede's body. For taunts, the first can show Dark Matter posing with its sword upright while its body emits a black aura. The second can have it do a loud roar while revealing its true eye, an animation from Planet Robobot. Then for the third, Dark Matter could suddenly 
shapeshift its body into an all-black version of various characters from the Kirby games that it's possessed in the past. Wispy, Adeline, Acro, and so on. Once transformed, it does a creepy pose with that character, but then quickly changes back. And finally, for Dark Matter's victory animations, the first can show Dark Matter stab its sword into the ground, then stare stoically into the camera. The second shows a mass of darkness forming together, not unlike what it does for its stage intro, but this time it forms into true Dark Matter, who just eerily stares down at you. And for the final, it'll actually show the second place player using their victory animation, but their eyes are filled with an unsettling blankness, and black fog starts to emit from their body once they finish their animation, implying that after winning, Dark Matter took control of their body and insultingly performed the loser's victory animation. Why the second place player, though? Well, Dark Matter tends to go after who it thinks is the strongest, and if it got first place, then it only makes sense that second place is the next best thing, right? Making the first loser Dark Matter's first choice. <laughs> And that does it for What If Dark Matter Was In Smash! So, if you enjoyed what you saw and would like to see even more characters be given possible Smash movesets, be sure to subscribe! And if you want to support the show, you can click the Join button below the video, the one on my main page, or the link in the description to become a sponsor for my channel. Doing so will get you access to my Discord server, channel emotes, as well as the option to watch these episodes early, on top of so much more. And of course, if you have a character that you want to see be given a possible Smash moveset, leave a comment down below, or contact me on Twitter at BrawlFan1 on Twitch. I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching!